Richard, you became what a ref. I, and I don't know yeah. about you, Channing, but every single place I walk now, people want to know if Richard Jefferson is really going to become an official in the NBA. To which I say yes. <laughs> every single <Yeah>. time. <laughs> How did your experience I, I, Did you go? not see him get booed? They fired him on the halftime. <laughs> I, I cannot They fired him in the corner. They said, ah, this ain't this ain't. <laughs> I cannot express to you. Get him out. I cannot express to you how I will never, ever referee ever again <laughs> under any circumstance. Like the, the, that jersey, I don't know if I'm going to hang it up. I might, I might frame it. I might frame my jersey, right? <laughs> but I got a referee funny. jersey. I gotta, I'm got. i probably going to frame my referee jersey with my whistle, my Fox 40. Say, That's what they call it. They don't call it a whistle. They call it a Fox 40. Why? <laughs> Exactly, because that's just the name of the brand. I'm telling you, it's a whole nother world, that referee world. It's a, hey, did they get you a Fox 40? And it's just like, what the fuck is a Fox 40? Like a whistle? Yeah, it gets a little symbol on it. But yeah, it, anyways, I'm getting a little deep in it. It was an amazing experience. When I tell you their job is over the top, it is so hard. And like, there's so much stuff before you even get into like the actual just game management, like learning where to stand, learning how to transition, all these different things. Then you got to sprint up and down. You never seen a referee call for a timeout before. Like those dudes are in such <laughs> ridiculous shape. And if the game is going, they're going. And it's just like, you know, no, it, it was it was I.O. But I always had a tremendous amount of respect for the referees and I would always crack jokes with them. That's why, you know, when I was sitting in those rooms, I like I got te I got text from like probably five or six different referees that were like, what are you doing? You have some balls to be going out there. I was like, yeah, I don't know what on earth and why I'm deciding to do this. It was, yeah, it was a bad idea, but I was trying to back. I was thinking about how to back out up until like 12 hours before. <laughs> Richard, uh, I, I will say this. I don't know if I've ever seen you visibly nervous. Oh, you were so fucking nervous. nervous. Oh, super. You were well, nervous. I was, Richard was like, Richard, he was like, well, yeah, go. he's out. But they were like, Richard, he hasn't taken the ball out. Yeah, take the ball out here. Do I do it here? Do I do it here? <laughs> Richard Yo. double thought every single call. Every he day. was like, field goal. No, no, Richard, that's three-pointer. He just made a free throw. You guys ready? <laughs> <laughs> Look, listening to, I think it was awesome, too, to have Monty McCutcheon on the broadcast That's while you were officiating, right? It was cool yeah. because he said it right away, like to Channing's point. You could just tell. He's like, he's overthinking everything right now. He's just thinking so much. Um, but but let's just say Richard this. has never been accused of that until that moment. <laughs> Let right. me say this. I, okay, let's add, like, let's add some. Let's, yeah, let's add some flavor to this, all right? I had not been on an NBA court in any capacity since I retired. So let's add that part of it. Two, we're doing the Nick game because I got I was supposed to originally do the the Orlando game, uh, OKC game, but then you know it ended Where up nobody being was going to watch. It, it, yeah, it, but it ended up being one versus two. It ended up being one versus two. So they were like, "Oh no, we're going to bump you to the next game." The next game ends up being the Nick game. Like if I could have any more pressure, Knicks fans hate me they loathe they me and now all of a sudden they have their undefeated summer league team about that be in a game with me refing. they were in the crowd heckling me they were in the crowd talking shit and i'm just sitting here like i am very exposed right now like even if you're laughing and joking you're still exposed and so now even mm -hmm. getting to one fan little asshole was like i'm running through it. he's like jefferson there's three minutes to go don't blow it. And I'm sitting here like, and the funny thing about it is I was literally counting down every minute, right? I was counting down oh. every minute. Just like, okay, we got to the seven minute mark. We're still alive. Okay. We haven't embarrassed our family and our lives. Right. Uh, but look, why do you do it? You do it one because fuck, I, I learned so much about the game, their mindsets, everything Two, you got to get yourself out of your comfort zone. Like that was the most nervous I'd ever been because there's never been something that I would enter into that I wasn't like ultra prepared for it. I was definitely not prepared for that shit. So, but that's why you do it. That's what makes it fun. Uh, but I will never fucking referee again, ever, 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 ever. You for, for stepping out. I do also think it's kind of like when we talk um, about, you know, whether it's coaches right now who have been in the media space and vice versa, when it comes to those media obligations, it's like, you understand, 
You know, it's like Steve Kerr. He was he was on this side and he was a media member. He called games, et cetera. And now he's in the coaching space. So he understands those third quarter, first quarter interviews. You know, even though you may not want to be a part of them at that time, you have all these other tasks, et cetera. It's a part of it. It's a responsibility. So for you, to your point, as you're calling games now and understanding calls and officiating, I loved the clip that was put together when Braun had approached you during the game. And you're like, look, I'm not here to make those calls. But now you have a little kind of, you know, a different kind of understanding and a perspective uh, of an official. Well, yeah, and, so, and, and in my defense, fucking Bron, don't come over and ask me what the hell's going on, bro. <laughs> like, like, it, like, I'm watching the game from a very different eye, bro. Yeah. And then Bron, Bron, even Luca, that's my guy. Luca, you're awesome. Follow you on TikTok, bro. You're dope. Luca comes over and starts cracking jokes and people asking me questions. I'm like, Apparently, I have to know the rule book because these guys want to come over and fuck with me. And so Brian was like, how could he change it? I'm like, Brian, you if we were if I was sitting on that bench right now, you wouldn't be asking me. You know me. You know, you wouldn't be asking me or Channing. You wouldn't be asking me or Channing. You, you, I'm like, bro, like, why are you talking to me? You've never asked me this question. And we were teammates for two years and change. <laughs> he doesn't Dude, know. Stop it. Yeah. That's so funny. well, kudos uh, to you.